Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday, July 18th, 2024. It's about 11.24 a.m. here, California time. A 3.3 earthquake up into the Alaska region being the latest quake here on the Earthquake 3D globe that sits well north of Anchorage. Uh, right around this fault system here on the map, the uh, Denali Fault, it looks like. They do get some uh, rather large earthquakes up there on occasion, but uh, right now, just a 3.3, fairly shallow at about one kilometer there below the surface. As far as uh, earthquake activity overnight, well, let's see. We did have some movement out here around Japan this morning with a 5.6 coming into this area. Also some uh, uh, further movement deeper into the Japan Trench. Quite a bit of deep activity out here if you look at it. Uh, all three of these are relatively deep. The 5.6 being the deepest in this area. We'll watch for some further movement out here with that deep activity. Uh, it is expected to um, follow up there with some shallower earthquake activity. At least it should anyway. Uh, still seeing quiet conditions out here across the Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, Vanuatu area, Fiji, Samoa, and Tonga. Goodness, super quiet in this area. Uh, 4.6 there. I think that's from yesterday, if I remember right. Let me see what we got. That was at 8.01. So, no, that's correct. That's still on the globe, but I noticed USGS has not posted that earthquake. Either way, still very quiet out here in this region. It looks like a 3.4 over here around New Guinea. Uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on this region. It's been super quiet. Uh, a little bit of migration here across the plate boundary today, across the... Uh, Java Trench. If you remember yesterday, we've seen a fairly deep earthquake here underneath the Java Trench area. Uh, I believe, let's see here, it's going to be this one right here, that 4.4. Almost, well, 551 kilometers deep into this area. Underneath the Java Sea, the Java Trench right here is a big time area for some uh, rather large earthquakes. A deeper activity does look like it uh, triggered a little bit further strain up here across the surface with that 5.3 being the latest quake here right at the subduction zone level. Uh, not for sure where that earthquake went off the globe here. Maybe I need to pull this back a little bit. There we go. Because I know it hasn't been over uh, 24 hours since we've seen that uh, super deep quake. About an hour away from that time frame. All right, up here across the northern edge of the uh, Pacific Plate. A little bit of movement and back building here across the subduction zone. 4.2 earthquake coming in this morning. Again, just prior to the subduction zone area. Another one over here, it looks like, from last night, 2.7. Most of the movement here uh, in the past couple days have been limited up here to the northern half of the Pacific Plate. Uh, that includes areas here around California as well. Uh, did see some further movement here just off the plate boundary here earlier this morning. A 2.4 near Desert Hot Springs. That is on the North American side of the plate boundary. Plate boundary going to be here in this red line. Getting a little clustering going on here. A little bit of increasing migrational pressure movement here across this area. Of course, that's where all the strain builds up for the uh, big release one day of the a uh, big earthquake here along the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. Got to keep an eye on that. We're well, I think we're well overdue here. And you know, I've been hearing it for I don't know how many decades that uh, this one's going to pop here one day. And eventually it will. Here's all that clustering going on here around the Borrego Springs area. Uh, a lot of this from yesterday. Uh, the latest quake in this region shows a 1.1. .1, uh, but still somewhat active out here across the southern portion of the state. And further up into Northern California, aside from the Clear Lake Volcanic Field there, um, got one earthquake up into the Cascadia subduction zone late last night. 22 kilometers for a 1.6. Nothing major going on out here across the Cascadia for now. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, one little lonesome earthquake there from yesterday. Uh, let's give a quick glance at the Yellowstone overview here. And there was some earthquake kicking off here. Oh, a few hours or so ago, registered on the seismos. About, uh, it's going to be about 5 o'clock, 5.20 or so in the morning, local time. Now, 
I'm not for sure if that's going to be this earthquake over here or not at 5.6. Possibly. Possibly could be that earthquake there. That would be about uh, my time, 047. So I don't know. It just it looks a little odd seeing that earthquake signature. It's a distant, distant earthquake, but I don't think a five-pointer is going to show up that far away. So I'm a little uncertain as to where this specific earthquake uh, took place at. It could be the Japan one. Maybe it was a little bit larger and um, they downgraded the magnitude there. But that's the only thing I can think of that would match the time frame. Uh, aside from that, not a whole lot of localized earthquake activity here to report. Maybe a little spike of an earthquake right here in the last hour or so. Um, one last night as well. These were, uh, if I remember right, thunderstorms out here uh, that rolled through the area. All right, uh, what else we got out here? Let's check out the earthquake map here. Not a whole lot going on through the rest of the country aside from some movement out in the oil fields. One little earthquake here in the New Madrid seismic zone, a 2.1 late last night. About 10 kilometers deep. This area has definitely been picking up a little bit of steam here uh, recently. May not look like much, but uh, we've got about 23 earthquakes in total around the New Madrid seismic zone area. Just a, another major fault system there. These intraplate earthquakes can get rather large, but it takes a long time for stress and strain to build up out here. I'm not, uh, I don't think we got enough strain for a big one out here. I mean, 1811, 1812, if I remember right, is when those series of large earthquakes struck. So it's been a little while, uh, two, over 200 years. So, hey, could be building up uh, some potential out there. The big island of Hawaii, still seeing quite a bit of earthquake activity out here. If I can get my mouse to work properly. Uh, stretching up from the crater area down into the upper east rift zone, it looks like. Uh, so you got two earthquakes here underneath the lava lake area of Kilauea Volcano. That's kind of interesting there. Uh, let's go check out the live view of Kilauea Volcano, see what we have. At the Lava Lake area, here's today's date. Most recent uh, image here, about 11 minutes old. Obviously, a little bit of volcanic gases out there. I don't see anything of abnormal activity. I could see uh, a return of an eruption up here at the lake. You never know. Depends on where the uh, weakest spot is out there in terms of the pressurization underneath this area. Uh, we're still quite inflated. Let's check out the inflation data here, deformation data. Still going up. Fairly sharp rise here this morning. And that continues the trend upwards here. This is the last week, past month. And if you go back the last few years here, we're still quite elevated out here across the summit and the upper east rift zone. Earthquake activity in general around the region. Looks like we're starting to amplify a little bit here in the last couple hours. Notice all this uh, earthquake clustering going on here. So we'll keep an eye on it. Could be getting ready to see maybe something pop off here. Um, I do have a seismograph station over here called uh, Hot Caves down here on the bottom. That's uh, just southwest of the area. There's a little bit of that uh, clustering observed on this seismo as well. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Eventually it's going to have to go. Uh, got a little bit of movement down here across the Pahala area. Mainly deeper earthquakes here underneath this region. 30, about 30 to 35 kilometers deep. It has to do with the plumbing system here that recharges the area of Mauna Loa and Kilauea Volcano. Uh, the rest of the um, globe out here. Let's see what we got. South America, a little three-pointer coming in right now. Middle America Trench, fairly active. Got one earthquake here. Looks like a 4.4 off the coast of the Panama area early this morning. Really no major earthquake activity overnight. But uh, who knows? Could be getting ready here. Like I say, we got to watch this region that's been awfully quiet recently.
All right, space weather activity here on this fine Thursday. Got uh, a little bit of sea flare activity popping up here on the X-ray flux chart. As you can see, a little crackling going on. Even a little M flare overnight looks like up into the M2.2 category. That uh, has got to be from this region here, 3751, the likely source of this activity. It is uh, gaining some momentum here, a little bit of complexity within that whole entire sunspot. So I'll continue to watch that. We are getting quite dynamic there. That's 3751. Uh, it is a growing sunspot here with a beta gamma structure. 3751 here, growing stage. Overall threat, 15% chance for an X flare. C flare at 60, M flare around 99% chance or so with a 15% chance for some proton events. And uh, no major wars on the forecast there for now. The Aurora forecast here for the next 30 minutes look awfully quiet. Storm Prediction Center, far as severe weather goes, got it uh, limited out here across the eastern seaboard region. Not a whole lot of tornado potential out there today. It looks like maybe some damaging wind gusts and a little bit of hail. Otherwise, all this activity just your localized general thunderstorms, right? out there across a good portion of the country but far as severe weather goes it is limited to these regions on the map here that you see in yellow and the darker green quick glance here at the asteroid approaches here uh wait this is the iceland chart here i was wanting it <laughs> i was wanting to check it but my voice said something else so this was put out here a couple days ago. They're talking about how the area is quite inflated. And uh, they believe there's about 13 million cubic meters of magma have been added underneath this area, underneath the magma. or in the magma chamber underneath Savart Singhi. So we're getting up there in terms of inflation. Just a little time here uh, before we see a new eruption there across Iceland. Now we can check out the next five close approaches here as far as asteroids go. Uh, they don't have anything for today or tomorrow or the next day. It looks like maybe on the 21st here. we got a 180-foot size asteroid coming in over 2 million miles. That's pretty close. I mean, that's way out there. Nowhere close to uh, being concerned about. Some big ones as well, 380 feet, uh, 290 feet. But if you look at the distance there, fairly safe. I would say and of course these are just the ones that are being monitored I'm sure there's many other smaller ones that are not um, being monitored similar to that meteor that struck over New York City here uh, a couple nights back a little interesting daytime event that took place there a lot of people saw it pretty crazy so occasionally we do get those uh, fireballs very small, but uh, they do make a little bit of a uh, little bit of excitement down here at the surface. Uh, let's see what else we got. I think that's about it, folks. Um, a little bit of newer activity here: northern India, eastern Afghanistan. A couple of four pointers out there. Uh, is the USGS reporting that? Yeah, they're not. Rather interesting there. I see at least three earthquakes, 4.9. Um, are these both 4.9, 4.8, 4.9, 4 4.0? Some newer activity out here, but nothing showing up on the USGS map. Goodness. All right. Well, we'll watch things today. I'm going to start cooking back out here in Northern California. I mean, we really never cool down. If you call 100 degrees cool down, then so be it. But it's supposed to be climbing back up around 110 or so, uh, maybe higher over the next couple days as we head into the weekend. It's going to be a hot one. So I'm just going to kick out, uh, kick off my shoes and relax a little bit indoors. Got to go water the garden here before it gets too hot. And uh, we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on this evening. The seismos out here look fairly quiet for now. Not a whole lot going on. Stay safe out there. And, uh, of course, be prepared. We'll catch you guys later.